Hi guys and welcome back to World of Tanks and today we're going to be looking at one of the three hero tanks that they've put on which is the FCM 50T Liberté and it's a French tier 8 heavy now the Liberté gets premium matchmaking so it only ever sees tier 9 matches at the most and most of the time you'll be in tier 8 matches in this thing and I love it, <laughs> I really do love it um, as you can see there, crew skills, we'll get that out of the way first. Uh, all I've got building up at the minute is repairs, which I would definitely recommend on this. And then after that, I don't know, maybe smooth ride, snapshot, something like that, uh, to help out, again, with the aiming when you're moving your turret, that sort of thing. Uh, smooth ride, not so much firing on the move, but, you know, it does help. This thing can shift. Now, it's a heavy tank. Uh, it is basically the hero tank version of the FCM 50T, the standard tier 8 premium heavy. And the difference is that this has got the French flag painted on it, a couple of cockerels, and some writing on the barrel. Now, the writing on the barrel, I believe, stands for liberty, equality, and fraternity, or brotherhood, um, which I think is the French motto. And as you can see, uh, it's quite a big tank. Um, I don't know. What are the big tanks I've got in my garage at the minute? Um, IS-3, that's quite low profile. IS-2, IS-2 is quite a big tank, and as you can see, it's quite comparable in size. In fact, it's bigger. Yeah, it is a lot bigger. Now, armor-wise, you've got 120 mil on the front of the hull, 120 on the front of the turret, 80 on the sides of the hull and the turret, 80 on the rear of the hull and only 60 on the rear of the turret. 51 kilometer an hour speed limit. This thing is fast and it's not one of those that's slow to get up there. It's got a thousand horsepower engine. It really does shift. Uh, it's maneuverable as well. 40 degree hull traverse, 36 degree turret rotation and it fires at eight rounds a minute and that's without crew skills or equipment. Now, 1,500 hit points as well, which is a good range of hit points. And like I say, this thing is fast. It gets up to that 51 km an hour speed limit, and it can sustain it quite happily over most terrain types. It, you know, it, you don't really lose much speed in this thing, uh, and it is very manoeuvrable. I have circled bigger... Well, I, I say bigger. It's not much bigger. Um, I have circled other heavy tanks in this thing like you would in a fast medium. It, it is extremely manoeuvrable. Now, 120 millimeters on the front of the hull isn't a lot. There is a lot of tanks, uh, especially in your own tier, and some below you as well, that can penetrate 120 mil of armor. But you do have some sloping going on there. Not a lot, but you do have some. But look at that lower glacis. It is tiny, and it is really, really sloped. I don't know the thickness on the lower glacis though, but it is a hard target to hit, and even if you do, like I say, it is very sloped, especially if you're trying to shoot at it in a taller tank. <coughs> the front of the turret, excuse me, uh, is a fairly small target to hit, you, and if they're not going to want to hit the gun mantle, there's not much to aim there that isn't extremely well angled. So you know that, you do get quite a few bounces off your turret, but don't rely on it. The, uh, your best defense in this thing is not getting hit and you use your mobility to not get hit and as you can see there's a commander's hatch on top of the turret which is another weak spot and it's a little on the large side so it's you know it's not too bad to hit uh, big tracks on the side of the thing and um, with a bit of angling your tracks can actually eat a lot of damage uh, I've found in this you know if you get caught out in the open but like I say use your speed and your maneuverability to not get hit in the first place the rear of the tank is 80 millimeters, and it is really quite well sloped. I know it's a reverse slope, but it is good angling on that. And you can get a few bounces off the back of your tank as well, which is unusual uh, in most tanks. And there's that, the weakest part on the back of it is the back of the turret there. Uh, yep, 60 mil. Now let's have a look at some of the gun stats. Right, it's got a 90mm gun, and quite a good 90mm gun, actually. Uh, aiming time is 2.29 seconds, which isn't bad. And accuracy is 0.36, which is quite good. Uh, eight rounds a minute, like I say, which is a, about average, I think, for some of the tanks in this tier. 
I know the STA1 when it's fully upgraded, the Japanese tier 8 medium, um, that's got a rate of fire of 8 rounds a minute and it's got a very comparable gun to this as well. Penetration 212 and as always with the 90 mils, 240 average damage. 259 with your premium ammunition and 45 with your HE. Uh, I think that's about it from there. Yeah, we've been through the whole traverse and everything else. Let's just compare that gun to a couple of other tanks. I do have an STA-1, but we're not fully upgraded yet. Well, let's have a look. See, this is a standard tier 8 medium. 2.29 aiming time, 0.36. 219 penetration, though slightly more penetration, but 8 rounds a minute. And I think it compares quite favourably to the Pershing's 90mm gun. Let's have a look, not been through that tank line yet. Well, let's have a look at them fully upgraded. Yeah, it's better than the Pershing's one. It's slightly more accurate, same aiming time. Uh, on the FCM, it's got a faster rate of fire on the FCM and it does have more penetration as well. And it is a more manoeuvrable tank. And I mean, I know the Pershing's a, a medium tank, but you do tend to think of the Liberté and the FCM 50T for that matter as more of a medium tank. It does maneuver and feel more like a medium than a heavy although when you're top tier um, you can use it like a heavy against a lot of the mediums of the same tier and the ones lower down as well right so where are we there's the Liberté so yeah it's a heavy tank it's a big heavy tank it plays more like a medium tank uh, or it does in my opinion anyway but like I say you can use it as a heavy when the need arises um, and it relies less on its armour and more on its manoeuvrability, which seems to be the French thing. Uh, I'm starting to go through the lines, as you can see here, I'm up to tier 5 in the heavies. Um, and once you get up to around tier 6, maybe 7, they do seem to become more manoeuvrable and slightly less armoured than some of the other countries' heavies. But yeah, I do like the gun on this tank. But anyway, enough of me jabbering on. Let's uh, show you a couple of replays and then you can make up your own minds. Right, this isn't a match that I'm actually going to show you. Uh, it was just the new Erlenberg variant, Blizzard. One of two new variants that came on. Obviously the reworked Dragon's Ridge, I've been on that one a couple of times. And it's a lot better. And uh, they introduced two new variants to two of the maps. One is Erlenberg in a Blizzard and the other is Steps in a Sandstorm. I've not been on Steps yet and this is the first time that I've been on the Erlenberg Blizzard. They've been on for nearly a week now, and yeah, the first time I got on it was today, and it really does affect your view range. Uh, I knew that they said that it would, I've uh, been keeping a track of it with the uh, the news feed, and they said that it does reduce your, your view range, I just didn't realise how much. I mean, I'm down near the southern bridge on Erlenberg, and you can't see all of our top tier heavies camping the ridge up there with reduced vision, because yeah, that's for winners. You would have thought that, you know, with them having reduced vision and all, I keep saying it to make it clear, that they would actually get in there a little bit. I mean, E75s are a brawling tank. They're not very accurate, and you've got to get up close. But anyway, enough of that. Yeah, there you go. The Blizzard. It looks absolutely lovely. It, it really is. They've done a fantastic job. And, yeah, it really does make a big difference to view range. Makes it feel more closed in. And I think that there's going to be a lot of use for this in sort of laying more traps. I mean, you can see how close we were, me and the IS-3, to that tank destroyer before we actually saw it. But there you go. Anyway, I uh, did crap in this match, so I'm not going to show you the rest of it. Let's get on to the proper ones. So here we are on Sun River. Team Destruction, it's a tier 8 match, and most of the time you will see tier 8 matches with this. Uh, like I say, it only plays up to tier 9. I, I don't know why, to be honest. Possibly because it's classed as a heavy. And I think if it was in tier 10 matches, I mean, it, you know, it's it'd be effective as a medium, but it'd take up a heavy tank slot in the matchmaking, so maybe that's got something to do with it. But yeah, it's a, you know, it's a good gun. So, like I say, most of the time you will see tier 8 matches. Uh, I tried to get a game in a tier 9 match in it, but uh, well, basically I got one, which was the Blizzard variant, and the rest of them were, were tier 8 matches. So that's what we've got, this one and another one. Now, 
I mean, you can see the speed at which I've got up here. And there's not many heavy tanks. In fact, I can't think of any other heavy tanks apart from other French ones that could get up here this quickly. So I'm going to head up to this northeast corner on Sand River, where a lot of tanks normally make a push around this place. And you know, if your art is fast enough and you've secured this corner, that there is a brilliant arty spot. You've got shielded, uh, well, you've got shielded, yeah, can't even talk English now. You've got shielding from the rocks on all but one little entranceway, uh, and it's a really good place for Arty to hide if you can take this corner. And, well, I mean, if they're fast enough to come up here, they can actually help you take this corner. Right, there's a comet across there that's popped up. I've managed to put a hit into him, and he's bounced off me. So I've dropped back down, so he can't really see much of my tank. Maybe a bit of my hull, and you can see my turret, definitely. And I just keep getting the timing wrong on the shots. But there's not much to shoot at the front of the turret. There's the gun mantle, and then a small strip, and then there's the very angled cheeks. And you can see there, another bounce from him, and I managed to get a shot into him. Get another one into him. And you can see the rate of fire. I know this is a heavy tank, and on most of the nations, this would be probably a medium tank gun. But it is a damn good gun. And there's a T-43 joined in. That went slightly wide and bounced off the edge of his turret. Now, the T-43 has just managed to knock my tracks off, and that's all they've managed to do. I put another one through the front of his turret, and my tracks are back up. I've got somebody else up here that's got here to uh, help me out at last. Yag Panther 2. Finish off the T-43. That comet looks like he's buggered off. Yep, there he is. He's thought, sod this for a game of soldiers. I'm dropping back. And I'm going to go around and see if I can surprise him. Right, <clears throat> and you can see the manoeuvrability of this thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, Comet's gone. He's dealt with. Right, there's a Freedom there, which is the hero tank version of the Super Pershing, the T26E4. Or is it the T24E? So oh, I can't remember. The Super Pershing. Oh, we've got an M6 up here as well. I mean, look at this thing climb. It's so powerful, the engine, and this is just such a manoeuvrable heavy tank. Right. Well, let's get this Super Pershing dealt with. And you notice I've moved down far enough so that the M6 can't get shots at me. So the only thing that could shoot back at me at the minute is the Super Pershing, the Freedom. If can put, no. Trying to put one through his front drive wheel to knock his tracks off and damage him as well. So I can keep getting flanking shots. Get one through it there allowing the guys over there to get flanking shots at him. He's hit my tracks again so far. That's all that seems to have happened is my tracks have taken damage. See if I can get through the top of his commander's hatch. And I do. Oh! Something else has hit me. T25AT from over there. And again, just knocked my tracks off. Same again. Tracks eat it. No, he's over there somewhere. Now I will have dropped off his radar, but I was still there, and I'm very, very surprised. I'm grateful, but I'm very surprised that he didn't take some more shots at me. Just because I've disappeared doesn't mean I've actually gone. Oh, whatever that was, just been dealt with. I think it was a T-37. We've got a tiger down here behind those buildings, but I'm not sure where. I'll take a shot, but. I'm not entirely sure where he was. I've got Ferdinand on the ridge. Tank destroyers do like to camp that ridge. Oh, and there's that cheeky T25 AT that took a shot at me. Can't quite... Oh, can I get him? No. Missed it and donked that shot. Oh, the scores are even at the minute. Six all. We've managed to make a push down here. There's that Tiger. Can I get one in the side of his turret? I can. It looks like he was looking around to see what was shooting at him, but I don't think he could see me. Put another shot in his direction, but miss. There's that Ferdinand again. Can I get one into his side? Yes. 
Not quite enough to finish him off though. And he's gone behind cover. And the tiger's disappeared. We've got a tiger 2 down there. Oh, there's the tiger. Managed to just put one into him before he disappears down there. Got to keep an eye on that Ferdinand, that T25. Make sure they haven't got shots at me. Tiger 2 has gone down that ravine. Tiger's sat behind the houses. Where I can see his turret and his commander's hatch. That's all I need to see. And that finishes him off. Ooh, and that was a close one. I think that was the Ferdinand, possibly. Could have been that T25. Got a T29 sat over there. Can I get a shot before he gets into cover? Yeah, maybe. And uh, knock his tracks off as well. Oh. Forgot about that Ferdinand for a minute. That could have been nasty. And T29's gone. I can't quite remember where he was. Let's see if we can go and deal with this T25. And the Ferdinand. T25 just takes a nice hit from somebody. And, oh, don't forget, there's a Tiger 2 over here as well. Right. Now, a Tiger 2 could definitely punch through the front of this armour. Oh, there's that T25. And no more. And I think that's the first damage I've actually taken this match. It wasn't my tract. Right, let's see if we can flank this Tiger 2. Well, at least shoot at him from the front. He can't angle against all of us. Oh, hello. There's a T29 down there. Is he stuck? Well, I don't think he's getting out of there anytime soon. So let's get rid of this Tiger 2 first. And he's making a run for it. I managed to get one into him. Not quite enough. And somebody else finishes him off. Right. Now let's put this T29 out of his misery. I think somebody was taking a shot at him there. Yeah, they are. He's dropped down enough. Oh, and he's only got the 90mm gun as well. Oh, dear. Poor guy. That's him put out of his misery. And we've got one heavy left, and I suspect it's that T29 from earlier. And some of the somebody on our team, one of the friendlies, puts a shot into my side. I don't know whether he's annoyed because I took the kill and he wanted to ram him or sit on him or something. Well, tough shit. <laughs> I, you know, I didn't injure it. I was going for the guy before that, so screw you. If that's not what your intention was by putting a shot into the side of me to show your annoyance at me taking the kill, then I apologise. But if it was, yeah, don't care. Right. Now, let's try and find that last remaining tank. Where is he? He could be anywhere. Although I don't think he's going to be in that northeastern sort of section of the map. That's where we've come from, unless he's made his way all the way around there. But we need to check out all down in these dunes. If we get within 50 metres, any of us, we should proximity spy him. Oh, there he is. Where is he? Oh, no, it's an IS-3, not the T-29. Somebody must have dealt with him. Can I get a shot at him? I can, but I don't think I'll penetrate at that distance. No. Look at the reload, though. It is fantastic. That one went wide. No. He's been tracked by that, I think, by that SU-152. And it looks like he finishes him off. Yes, he does. So there we go. That was a nice round in the uh, Liberté, the FCM-50T. And obviously, I mean, it is exactly the same as the normal FCM-50T, apart from the paint job. And that's what I love about these uh, Tier 8 premiums. You do make a lot of credits. 126,000 credits earned. Although, I might have got 7,500 from an op that I completed. Uh, steel wall as well, which is nice, yeah. 3,500 damage, just shy of. Second class mastery badge. Not a bad round, all in all thousand assisted as well because well you're so quick you can get up at the front of them and get there quite fast and yeah blocked quite a bit as you can see there 1685 blocked which isn't bad a little bit of angling you've got those big tracks which can absorb a lot of shots oh no it wasn't money it was 250 xp from that op there you go top of the board but yeah, I, I really like this tank. I, I do. If you like manoeuvrable quick tanks, it might be one to have a look at. And we've got another replay coming.
So it's another tier 8 match, uh, standard battle on Swamp this time, and I think, if I remember rightly, this one goes almost the distance. Uh, price wise on this tank, uh, it's not available on its own at the minute, although it might be by the time this video goes up, although I think it's coming on possibly this weekend on its own. Uh, you can get the Freedom on its own, which I think is 4,500 uh, gold. Which is actually not a bad price because the normal Super Pershing is 7,200 gold. So it's quite a discount. I think they've just put the Cromwell Knight on separately as well, but I don't know how much that one is. Uh, I know in the store it's 7.99, but I don't know how much it is for gold. Um, and the Liberté will be on for... Uh, I think they said 7,200 or possibly 7,500 gold when it comes on to the uh, in-game store which to be honest is a bargain because the FCM 50T on its own is 11,900 now as you can see that I was going to go down that southern side of the map but nobody was coming up this way and I don't like coming up this way when I started this side because you always get pinned down behind this bloody rock and you just get fed up and every time you poke your nose out something spots you everything takes shots at you and you just end up spending most of your game here doing nothing now I think that was a Liberté that was shooting at me so I managed to track him but yeah back to price wise sorry you can get all of them in a bundle with 30 days of premium and a load of equipment on each one and I think 25 times 3 XP ops for about 19,000 gold I think it is if I remember rightly or for 13,000 gold you get all three hero tanks and three garage slots oh you also get that with the other one uh, I don't think you get any premium time with it though and you don't get the equipment on it um, the pack I bought was the 13,000 one because well it it is a damn good price like I say the FCM 50T on its own is 11,900 gold so for that extra 1,100 I got the Freedom and I got the Cromwell Knight which is an awesome little tank it's basically the same as a fully upgraded Cromwell, but instead of, I think, either 34 or 36 degrees a second hull traverse, it has 50 degrees of hull traverse, which is phenomenal. But anyway, back to the Liberté. Uh, I'll talk about those other ones when I do videos on them. Right, so as I say, I've come up here. I didn't really want to, but nobody else did. And as I predicted, I have been pinned down behind this bloody rock and nearly every time I poke my nose out I get shot at there's a Liberté down there and he's not seen me so I'll put a shot into him and then pull back in case I've been spotted I've not got sixth sense on this in fact I'm just working on repairs actually my first crew skill so if you don't have sixth sense always assume you've been spotted and whatever's up here with me I think is a KV of some kind is putting shots in the direction that that little thing was last seen but it's not there anymore and there's an AMX 12T over there can I get a shot at him? yes but I was a bit slow freedom and that's the other side near the castle and there's nothing else there and this is pretty much what happens oh there's a motherland Let's see if we can shoot at him can we? Oh, that was nice. Lucky shot. I didn't expect anything from that. There's that 12T again. Can we get a shot into him? Where are you? And there we go and tracked him as well. Took off nearly off his health. Is he still going to be there? He is still there, tracked. Is he going to be there for a third one? No, because he's dead. There we go. Yeah, I do get pretty bored across here and get a little bit frustrated. And at some point, I do make a move. Oh, somebody else made him with that Liberté. How the hell did he get across here? You sneaky Frenchman. I know I'm in a French tank, but that's completely different. Right. Something's shooting at me from over there, though. So, reverse backwards. Keep my strongest armor towards them not getting shot anymore so I'm alright to turn oh it's a T-150 not a KV well, let's see if we can take out this enemy Liberté being cautious because I don't fancy taking lots of flanking shots from that ridge line over there and I'm still not sure what's across there but there's something oh no 
T3485 and our team finished him off. Where's that guy? Oh, he's right over there. Good shot. Enemy freedom. I managed to get one into him. Oh, drop back down in here just as that one misses and whizzes across the top of my tank. And there's a lot of shots coming in now. Although, I've possibly... No, still back on radar. What the bloody hell's spotting me at that range? Is that freedom? That was a close one as well. I must be uh, not showing much of my tank to shoot at. Let's get out. Oh, I'm expecting to take a hit here. Take another shot at freedom. But miss. I didn't really expect a hit. And I take a hit and a bit of damage. I was really expecting some shots into my back as I came back into here. I've got to get out of this place. Now, they are over there somewhere. Oh, there's a shot. Is he there? Nope. Not at that point. Let's see. Oh, there's that freedom again. Can I finish him off? Put it into his flank and, yep, he's done. Right. They're shooting at me again now. Let's see if I can entice them. They're not penetrating. I'm at the right angle from to bounds. So I'm quite safe at the minute. Nope, not there either. There's something in that direction. But again, not sure where. I'm not quite close enough for them to show up with my view range. Oh, equipment, by the way, that I've got on here is a tank gun round with vertical stabiliser and vent, which is pretty much my standard setup for anything that can take them. Well, the vertical stabiliser, should I say, everything can take gun rammer and vents, more or less. No, can't see anything over there. And at the minute, the scores are about even. Well, I say about even. Is it 6-8 to them? I've got to get out from behind this rock, because I am absolutely useless to the team up here. Let's see if I can just entice them to shoot at me again and then I can maybe get a, a bearing on where they are from where the shots are coming from. Come on, you could see me before. Take a shot at me. Come on. There we go. Aha, there you are. Now, at this point, uh, yeah, I do make a, a few questionable choices in this match, I would say. I'm not firing, because if it was me, and I got hit, I'd have pulled back. And my wife encourages me to put another shot in there anyway, saying, no, they want to pull back. They'll still be there. She's, in fact, she was telling me, yeah, they'll still be there, shoot them. And I'm, so, yeah, well, they'll probably move back, I would have done. Yeah, but people are stupid. Well, yes, yeah, so some World of Tanks players aren't of the more intelligent variety, so eventually I think, well, I'll put another shot in there. They might not have moved back. There we go. And they hadn't moved back, she was right. Like I say, if it was me, I'd have moved. Now they've moved. So, yeah, could I have killed him by now? Possibly, but he probably would have moved after the second shot hit him anyway. So, keep an eye out. See if any more shots come in, but they don't. Yeah, he's definitely moving. There he is. He just pops from mine. The concealment's not good enough to hide him. Put one into him, and with the reload, I'll get another one into him. And that's the M6 finished off. Right, now there's one other person shooting at me from down there. And it, from guessing from the time in between the shots it is just one thing shooting at me so this is where I poke out a little bit there he comes not doing any damage so I'm pretty safe to try and entice them to give away the position not happening and I think well there's only one of them down there shooting at me do you know what let's go it doesn't seem to penetrate Oh no, first of all, I decide to shoot a bush. Because I think, you know, why not? <laughs> it's such an obvious hiding spot, there is normally somebody in it. So I do put a shot into the bush. Then I think, do you know what? Sod it, let's go for it. Brought the scores back a little bit. It's now 8, 9, is it? Do you know the resolution on the 
screen that I do this on isn't very good when I'm doing the audio commentary. Right. Sneak down this side, try and use as much concealment and keep as far away from them as possible to give myself the best chance of getting as close as I can before they actually see me. Stop behind this rock. See if anything pops up. Nothing. So, either whatever was there has gone, or it can't see me. Alright, well, let's go for it again then. And this is the worst part. Now I've been spotted. You're out in the open. And, well, it's a T-150. And for some reason, and I don't know what I'm doing, it just doesn't seem to penetrate the damn thing. And I've got, you know, 219 millimeters of penetration. And I'm struggling to get through this one of that cable. Uh, T-150. I don't know if it's because it's above me and the dodge angle or where I'm aiming or what. I don't know. Um, I have colorblind mode on because, well, I am actually colorblind. So I'm really not sure, but I'll just go back to shooting the turret. And then I think artillery finishes him off. Bounced off the top of my turret there, which is... I don't know how thick the top of this turret is, but I didn't think it was going to be that thick. And he's just ricocheting off the side. Now wait a minute, and artillery finishes him. There we go. Right, so we've brought the scores back up to 10-9 in our favour. It's not a certain win, though. They've got two heavies, a tank destroyer, and their artillery left. So, let's head towards their base. Their artillery is going to be somewhere either down in this gully down here, or it's going to be in their base. Right, let's see if we can find him. Right, he's not in this gully. Not sure where the two heavies are. Oh, there he is. That's one, not quite enough to finish him off. Keep moving so he can't get a decent bead on me. And finished him off. He didn't fire at me. I don't know if he wasn't looking or if he'd just given up or if he was waiting to aim. I couldn't tell you. So, two heavies and a tank destroyer. Right. There's one of the heavies. Now, here is where I decide to try and get back to see if I can get to a point where I can get up and snipe at that heavy, but he's gone. Somebody finished him off. So, spin it around, and then the Rymantel Borsig. Get one into him. He gets one into me and does quite a bit of damage. I think he actually tries to ram me. I can beat his reload though, but I think I'm probably going to take one more hit. And no, I didn't. Wow. I didn't realise they reloaded that bad, uh, that slowly. Right, so we've just got one heavy to deal with. I'm on five kills. Can I make it six for a top gun? And it's an AMX M445. Ooh, nearly ammo racked him. That's the tier 7 French heavy. And one more to finish him off. And that's my top gun. Spent most of the time stuck behind a rock, but it came good in the end. 3,471 XP, high caliber, first class mastery, top gun, steel war. Just shy of 4,000 damage. 1,240 assisted and blocked. 3,375. I really do like this tank. And when you get into a tier 9 game, use it like a medium and you won't go far wrong. Well, hopefully you can make up your own mind about that tank from that video. But I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. Don't forget, take care out there and I shall catch you all next time. See you.